Gentlemen. Gentlemen, I bid you welcome and beg at the very outset to be allowed to express my extreme gratitude that you have seen fit to grace this noble room with your presence this afternoon. <clears throat> I, I have here to hand a document of high concern and vast importance. <clears throat> vast importance to each and every one of you. This document, gentlemen, sets forth the rules regulating an agreement to enter upon a venture known as a tontine. A tontine is, in point of fact, a lottery. A lottery, plain and simple, gentlemen. Simple. Into this tontine, each parent or guardian has placed for each of you and in your name the sum of 1,000 pounds sterling. The sum so constituted is to be administered by a self-perpetuating board and held in trust by them for whomsoever survives. Survives. This 20,000 pounds will grow and grow under astute management who will charge but a nominal fee. And this, by then, great sum will be handed to the one amongst you who is the last surviving member of the Tontine. It is as plain and as simple as that. Therefore, allow me to say, in conclusion, long life to all. But since no other shall be present when the winner has won, has won. Let us cheer him now. He whom fate sees fit to favor. Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Never fear, ladies. He knows his prey. <laughs> ah, see, yonder. <laughs> Kill. And so it gives me great pleasure to name this ship Repulsion. God bless all who sail in her. not being safe, eh? Speak up, what's wrong with it? Not yet, Tumba. Oh, you must learn the white man's code. It is not sporting, it is not done to fire at Rhino until he's actually charging. <laughs>
die, my son. All this will be yours. Yes, father. of your many and varied services to the crown. I dub thee Oh We are frightfully sorry Sir Robert <laughs> Grandfather. The time has come. Yes. Yes, I really believe the time uh, has come. <laughs> At last. At last. Father, you're a very quick man to the sheet, Michael. Oh, yes, yes. You see, you see, sir, I thought... I know what you thought, sir. But let me tell you something. Death cannot be assumed simply because signs of life are not present. Hasn't that medical school taught you how to take a pulse? Oh, we, we have touched on it, sir. But mostly, we cut up things. Hmm? Hmm. Do you know what this is? No, sir, I gave it to you unopened. Hackett is dead. Hackett, sir? Mm, Ebenezer Hackett. Went to school with him. An unpleasant name for a dirty little boy and an even dirtier old man. Died of the pox, no doubt. Now, the point is, sir, uh, it only leaves my brother Joseph and me in the tontine. Oh, yes, I see, sir. Do you, sir, do you? I doubt it. I doubt it. But we're not concerned with you, are we, eh? No, sir. We're concerned with me, my thoughts and feelings. That's right. Yes. Now, you ought to go and get Joseph and tell him I want to see him. Yes, sir. Won't that upset you, sir? Upset me? Well, of course it'll upset me. But nothing will upset me more than not winning the tontine and leaving you with a mountain of debts and a doubtful future as an idiot in a profession of rogues and charlatans. So go and get him and tell him I'm dying. Thank you, Peacock. Privilege, sir. How's your grandfather this morning? He says he's dying, Peacock. Oh, they all say that. But Peacock, he wants to see his brother Joseph. Master Joseph? Yes. Well, they haven't even spoken to each other for 40 years. Yes, I know, Peacock. He must be dying. <laughs> yes. Goodbye, Peacock. Good day. <laughs> like it. There's too much excitement in this house. <laughs> Joseph Finsbury at home? I can't hear you. Could you speak a little lower? Is Joseph Finsbury at home? Lower? Is 
He's Joseph. Joseph Finsbury. Is he at home? No, he is not. Ah. Oh. Could you tell me then when he is expected? Who, may I ask, is inquiring? Oh, allow me. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. I am Michael Finsbury, of the same name. Oh. I'm sorry to seem so inhospitable, but in the past 12 months alone, over 320 girls in the greater London area have been attacked by persons unknown and many of them unnecessarily mutilated. Do come in. Oh, yes. Thank you. They do say it's something to do with the weather. Oh, yes. So, you're Michael Finsbury? Yes. Actually, Michael Hubert Gregory Finsbury. And I am your cousin, Julia. Yes, I know. Do come in. Thank you. Do you, uh, do you breed birds? Oh, no. Cousin Morris is an ardent collector of eggs. He has spent most of his adult life in the pursuit of them. Most commendable. Oh, do you think so? I find them obscene. Well, yes, yes, of course, they are uh, obscene. I suddenly see now how obscene they are. He doesn't pursue birds, I take it? No, only eggs. Oh, well, I'm glad, because that would be even more obscene. Oh, I can see you are a deep thinker like me. What is your particular interest? Oh, my, my consuming interest is the human body. Oh, oh I, 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 I'm studying to be a surgeon at St. Mary's. Oh, I see. So that's where you go every morning. I see you often uh, through the window. Oh, what an extraordinary coincidence. I look at you through the window, and I I've often had a burning desire to nod, but my grandfather does not approve of such things. Nor does my Uncle Joseph. Yes. Well, there it is then. Is he at home, your Uncle Joseph? Oh, no. He is in Bournemouth taking the sun with Cousin Morris and Cousin John. Oh. Might I inquire why you are inquiring? Well, my grandfather is dying. Oh. Oh, it's nothing serious. He's been dying for years. But now he seems to have taken a turn for the worse. And he wants desperately to see his brother before it is too late. Well, you, you could send Uncle Joseph a telegraph. They say the telegraphic service has much to commend it. Yes. I've heard them say that. What an excellent idea. I've never sent one. One should always broaden one's horizons. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, that's what I'll do then. Thank you for pointing out to me how obscene eggs are. It, it was a most illu excuse me. It was a most illuminating observation. Oh, it was superb of you to call. Oh, not at all. I hope I shall see a great deal more of you. Oh well, uh, off to St Mary's. Oh yes, I, I'm, I'm sure they have need of you there. Along with everything else, Uncle Joseph says there are 124 tropical diseases that can be contracted here in England. Mainly from fresh fruit, returning travellers and... hand towels in public places.
124? Yes. Really? I must make a note of that. Goodbye. Goodbye. Michael Finsbury again. Oh. oh, we mustn't make a habit of this. People will begin to talk. Oh, I, I, I fully agree. It's just that I don't know where to send the telegraph. Oh, Mrs. Googe's boarding house. Mrs. Googe's boarding house. Flodden Road. Flodden Road. Bournemouth. Bournemouth. Hans. Hans. Fanny? John! What are you doing? You're supposed to be looking after Uncle Joseph. Ah! Uncle Joseph! I knew there was somebody I was supposed to be looking after. Um, I merely threw my body across this young lady to protect her from the falling uh, thing. You realise you made me drop my grebe? Mm. I'm awfully sorry, Morris. Come outside. Oh, Mr. John, do you think he'll get me my notice? Oh, don't worry, I'll take care of Mrs. Gould. Tonight, then, eight o'clock behind the bandstand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you insatiable creature. John, I'm waiting. You must control this obsession you have for chambermaids and other girls of that class. I try, night and day, I try. Oh, there you are, boys. I was just about to take this telegraph to your uncle. Telegraph? From whom? I don't know, Mr. Morris. Private matters are private with me. I'll take it. We must relive our madness tonight. Ten o'clock under the pier. <laughs> I'm coming, cousin. What is it, cousin? Look at that! Bravo! We're going to win! 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 Later! Later! No time for celebration now! Uncle! Have you been smoking again, Uncle? And you've got yourself in a draught. He's left the window open. Well, shut it then and get his coat and things. Right. Uncle dear, you're going out. Going out? Ah, oh, well, that'll be jolly. Yes, you're going to London. London? Yes. Now, where did I put it? Where is it? <clears throat> ah, here it is. Now, London. Now, if you ascribe a number to each letter of the alphabet, beginning with A as 1, B as 2, culminating with the letter Z as 26, then the letters that compose the word London add up to 74, which, coincidentally, is my age. Lovely, Uncle. Now, read this. Yes, come on, now, get into your... Well, why, 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 why this unseemly haste? Your brother is dying. What? What did you say? What? Masterman? Masterman dying? This must be the effect of the nutmeg tarts. Mm. Nutmeg tarts. When he was at Harrow, he lived on little else. Where are your gloves, Uncle? Gloves, I don't know. Gloves I have for some time been compiling exhaustive notes on the peculiarities of spices and herbs in common use. And I have discovered that it can be authoritatively proved that the excessive indulgence in nutmeg leads to hallucination and general debilitation. But pepper, on the other hand, in any form of variety, passes through the human body without any effect on the organs. It is absolutely no value, nutritive or otherwise. But in the case of cinnamon or cloves... Uncle. Yes, you have a question. Read your paper. Tontine. Lovely word. <laughs> Tontine. A derivation from the name Lorenzo Tonti, a banker of Neapolitan persuasion. Read your paper, Uncle. Morris, have you any idea how much it's worth? Well over a hundred thousand pounds. <laughs> and we've earned every penny of it. Ah, true, cousin. True. We've devoted our lives to him. 
They were two little orphans. He waited on him hand and foot. It wasn't easy keeping him alive. Yes, it was difficult. We kept him from the drafts. We warmed his shoes before we put them on. We tucked him up in bed at night. We fed him every sort of tonic. Never thinking of ourselves. First in our hearts, first in our minds. And now, after all these years, he's gone. He's, he's gone! gone! You go that way. Excuse me, sir. Excuse you, sir. None of this young pup ought to be in the army. I beg your pardon, sir. I take it these seats are not reserved. I see you are proficient in the ancient and noble art of knitting. I'm sure you know that examples of knitting, much like your Afghan there, date back to the mainstream of the Egyptian civilization. Ah, the avocational activities of man are many and varied. Some demand skill. Yours, for instance, carpentry. Oh, the playing of games with balls of various sizes. Have you found him? No. Come on, then, this way. Some demand inspiration. Oil painting or the writing of epitaphs. The rest of us are uninspired lot collect things. My nephew, for instance, with whom I am traveling, <clears throat> collects bird's eggs. And I, for the last 63 years, have been collecting facts. Safe enough. Yes. What a joy it is to indulge in convivial conversation with a fellow being, a kindred spirit. This will prove the most amiable journey. You pursuing your hobby and me, mine. Bournemouth Strangler escapes large-scale murder hunt in three counties. Ah, murder of murderers. I once gave an informal lecture on the subject. I wonder if you're aware, sir, of the fact that there is an increasing number of unsolved murders every year. Now, this fact I gleaned from a pamphlet on the subject by the noted criminologist, Sir Henry Stanhope, whose own murder, I might add, was never solved. How it works, I perceive, we're traveling at a goodish rate. You realize, sir, I state only facts, no opinions, and this fascinates everyone I meet. Oh, don't be alarmed. I shall continue, but for the moment, I must take my leave. Be back in a moment. Uncle, where are you going? Uncle! Okay. Ah. Oh, how dare you? Madam, my apologies. I'm looking for my uncle. <gasps> Do I look like anybody's uncle? No, no, I'm just sorry.
Marty. I think there's been an accident. Fred? Yeah? We haven't heard the last of this. What's going on here, sir? Control yourself, control yourself. Look here, stop all this damn rioting. Now look here, you men, douse that fire in the baggage van. Now the children will arrange themselves according to height, and the women will muster in alphabetical order. Now I want a couple of volunteers, you and you. Now follow me. That's right, get those bags down. Form a human chain. Sir, I didn't lose my right eye in the Indian mutiny to have my left eye offended by the youth of England standing around with their asses hanging out. Dress yourself, sir, dress yourself. The most disgusting sights I've ever seen. Dress yourself, sir. You are, I suppose, aware of the fact that accidents occur with more frequency on standard gauge railways. Abigail! Abigail! Right. Where's Uncle Joseph? Well, Where is he? I, I'm just having a look for him in there. Oh, oh. Morris, do you realize it's a criminal offense to wear that coat? I'm not wearing any trousers. But, but that too is a criminal affair. Uncle Joseph! I hope you don't mind if I take my leave. Oh, would you, sir? Uncle Joseph! Hmm. Uncle Joseph! Cousin! Oh, oh no. Oh, don't tell me. I can't bear it. Is it him? Of course it's him. Well, how do you know it's him? Well, look at his coat. It's his coat. Is he dead? What's left of him is very dead indeed. Oh. Are, you, are you going to say a prayer or something? Not at a time like this. Oh. Now, you listen to me, Uncle Joseph. You may be dead, but you listen to me. You're a nasty, mean, spiteful, vindictive old man to do this to two little orphans. Your brother's on his deathbed. Couldn't you have waited a day or so? You stupid old... Look, I'll get some use. help. Wait. Let me think. Into the woods. Oh, right, yeah. With him! Oh, Uncle Joseph! Into the woods with Uncle Joseph. Don't stand there, the tontine. We may still win it. He's dead. He's not dead until I say he's dead. Hey! Hey, sir! Huh. I wonder, sir, if you and your fine bay gelding are heading for London? I am, sir. And what would you ask a passenger? Your company would be payment enough, sir. Oh! Well, thank you. <laughs> hey. Well, I wonder if you realize how many times the word whip occurs in the Old Testament. 174 times. Oh, I see you're impressed. But that figure is infinitesimal when you consider that the Bible contains 774,176 words altogether. And it is a remarkable fact. Do get on. We'll be here all night at this rate. Well, a pen knife's not the ideal tool, is it? Anyway, I don't think we ought to be doing this. I don't want to go to prison. Don't <laughs> stop snivelling in that revolting way. If you can't dig a hole for him, cover him in leaves or something. Cover him. Why do I always have to do the dirty work? Because you are remarkably stupid. Yes, I've forgotten that. Sorry. In any case, I have to look after my hands. Petal soft hands are the mark of a great ornithologist. Now get on with it. Morris, look, I beg of you, let's have done with this. Uh, let's get a, an undertaker. He won't be too expensive and he'll do a professional job. We are not burying him. We're not? We are merely hiding him. We're merely hiding him. Now, what we need is a venal doctor. But Uncle Joseph's dead. It's too late. Not for him, for us. Now, you remember that chambermaid you got into, um... Thing? Thing. Who was the doctor who did the, um... Thing? Uh, Pratt. Dr. Pratt. Was he venal? I, I didn't like to ask. Well, did he do the 
thing, yes. Good. But what's he got to do with it? He's part of the plan. Now, you and I are the only two people in the world who know that Uncle Joseph is, um... Thing. Dead. And we won't tell anyone. But people are bound to find out sooner or later. Not quite yet. Now, Uncle Masterman, at best, has only two or three days to live. When he goes, I'll announce that Uncle Joseph has died of a heart attack on hearing the tragic news of his brother's death. Mm. I then go along to your accommodating Dr. Um, Pratt thing. He provides me with a blank death certificate for Uncle Joseph. I fill in the date and the tontine is mine. Mm -hmm. Ours. <laughs> we'll go into that later. Uh. There come moments in life, cousin, when every man must find moral courage. Your moment is about to come. It is? It is. I'll go to London, tell everybody that you and Uncle Joseph have been delayed. You go back to Bournemouth and remain there till I send for you. I see, but, um, what about him? I'm coming to that. You must find a suitable box or container, crate him up and send him back to London. We shall, after all, need him at the funeral. Crate him in a box? What sort of box? Something of suitable size and robustness for a man in that condition. If you'll allow me, sir. I will take charge of the rest of the packet. All right, Peacock. But uh, don't lean too far in the barrel. I say, we've received a telegraph. It must be from Uncle. Oh, drat. No? It's from Lady Pittman. She's sending back that statue we sent her. Says it's a fraud. I am having it crated and sent back to you at once. Was it a fraud, Peacock? Life is a fraud, Master Maker. Yes, Peacock. Well, this is all right, isn't it? This should fetch a good price at Sotheby's. Will it if it arrives in one piece, sir? Well, there's nothing else to sell, except the piano. But it's all right, Peacock. I'll answer it. Michael Finsbury, do I presume? Yes. I'm your cousin, Norris Finsbury. Oh, do come in. Thank you. Isn't Uncle Joseph with you? Alas, no. My dear uncle, like your beloved grandfather, is of advancing years and declining health. Grandfather will be disappointed. May I take your coat? Uh, no, thank you. No, thank you. Uncle Joseph is naturally deeply concerned with his brother's death. Uh, I mean, illness. Or is he already... Oh, oh, no, 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 not yet. What a relief to us all. I know you are a medical student, cousin, so I need hardly remind you that blood is thicker than water. Yes, five times as, I believe. Uncle Joseph is valiantly gathering what remains of his strength in order to come to London in the next day or two to be with his dear brother at the end. Oh, I do hope he will be in time. Uncle Masterman, is that low? Yes. Oh, I am... Filled with an immense grief that that proud and lovely man should. Oh, my God! Sir! Sir! It's me, Morris. Oh. oh, look at that noble face ravaged by time. Those eyes filled with pain. Oh, I should never have forgiven myself if I hadn't seen you before. Cousin. But you shouldn't be out of bed. Cousin, this is our butler. No need to call him. I can assist my own flesh and blood. Who's the butler? I have that honor, sir. How dare you embrace me? Grandfather is upstairs, sleeping. All right, Peacock, you may go. Oh, thank you, Master Michael, sir. Oh, thank you, too, Colonel. Um, I, too, must be on my way, cousin. I have some urgent pressing business. You will let us know the moment Uncle Joseph arrives. As soon as I've got the date, uh, that is, immediately. A great pity, dear cousin, that grief is the agent responsible for bringing us together after all these years. Cousin Morris had no trousers on, Peacock. If you say so, sir. For heaven's 
heaven's sake, Julia. Oh, it's you, Morris. I thought it was the Bournemouth Strangler. It says in the papers he might be in London. Do I look like the Bournemouth Strangler? Well, yes, you could be, Morris. Uh, why are you wearing that strange coat? Because it suits me to wear it. Why, I think you should have it shortened. Isn't Uncle Joseph with you? Uh, no. Um, the news contained in the telegraph came as a great shock to him. He is remaining in Bournemouth with Cousin John. And now I must bid you good night. Good night, Cousin. You won't always wear that coat, will you? It's very frightening. It could easily have been the Bournemouth Strangler instead of you. I might have been stalked by him. And in fleeing, been trampled by a runaway horse. Perhaps a, a large hole in my head. My brain spilling out all over Shaftesbury Avenue. Oh, wouldn't that have been a homecoming for you? Going to the mortuary to identify my poor, crushed body. Body? What body? No body, Morris. I, I was just thinking aloud. You mustn't use that word. It isn't becoming. Oh, I meant a dead body, Morris. Not what is under a person's clothing. Julia. Now, why did I say that? See that it gets on the first available train. been many, many editions of the Bible, some famous, some infamous. For instance, there is the Wicked Bible, so-called because the word not is omitted from the seventh commandment, making it read, thou shalt commit adultery. A small error which could encourage certain sections of the populace to a frenzy of immorality unknown since first century Rome. Speaking of which, have you heard that the Emperor Heliogabalus... I'm afraid, sir, this is as far as I go. What? Oh, splendid, excellent, excellent. Many, many thanks. Thirteen hours seemed but so many minutes. Well, perhaps no, no, you no, might I... care to know who your fellow traveller was. None other than Joseph Finsbury, scholar extraordinary, lecturer, and one of the two Englishmen living who can speak pure Swahili. Amgoa, Mombasa, Pau, Amgadi. Well said, sir. Well, well, who knows? Perhaps our paths may cross again. God save us. Ah, well. <laughs> Peacock, isn't it? Uh, ah, how long has it been? I came as quick as I could, sir. It's Master Joseph, Peacock. Master Joseph. <laughs> oh, forgive me, sir. It oh, must pardon. be all of 40 years. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I remember clearly the last time I saw you. On that very day, the American Colonel Coate, the inventor of the Coate revolver, used electricity to detonate a torpedo, thereby destroying a brig in full sail upon the Potomac in Washington, D.C. The present, though not the former capital of the United States, New York City, being the first... I take it my brother is upstairs. Yes, sir. May I announce you, sir? No, no. I will announce myself. You might perhaps bring me a cup of tea. I am a trifle peaked. With pleasure, sir. China, of course. You remember, I developed a taste for it in Turkey during the 23rd revolution there. Oh, 
Masterman? Masterman? Is that you, Mother? It's I, Joseph. Joseph? Brother Joseph. Oh, what unexpected joy. Don't tax yourself, brother. I, I am raised in spirits already. It doesn't raise mine to find you so, lying in the very bed in which our dear Papa passed from us. I am soon to follow his example, I fear. Never say it. Oh, but I do say it. Last week, old Hackett, next week, or, or even before, old Masterman. Ah, yes. Poor Hackett. I must somehow attend his funeral. Our generation, brother, is on its way to Valhalla, or, as the Red Indians so aptly put it, the happy hunting ground. Let me uh, give you a glass of, of good cheer. Mm -hmm. It will seal the occasion and revive your your spirits. Oh, no thanks. I've asked for some tea. Oh. Uh, uh, well, what? What is it, brother? Shall I send for a physician? Oh, no, no. No, send for no one. <laughs> I only want you. Jojo. Oh, oh, Jojo. Jojo. <laughs> Oh, those boyhood names. Oh, what what fond memories they recall. Ah! My goodness. My gracious. What? 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 What is it? Are you, are you hurt? Oh, no, no. No, I, I needed some air. I must... I must have air. Open the window, Joseph. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. my soul. You're, you're down again. Here, let me, let me. Oh, yes, now, you, you lie here and let me, let me open the window. What was that? What was that? Surely, surely the populace are not demonstrating. Yesterday, do you know, I had the narrowest of escapes upon the soul. I could have been killed. Killed? I was in the water closet of the Bournemouth Express when it quite unaccountably exploded, thereby extensively damaging the rest of the train. I can't really think that I was to blame, although at the time I was smoking. Hmm. But it didn't damage you. Eh? No, no, no. Thanks for the thought. I confess I am a trifle ruffled. Yes. I think I'll lie low at the club a few days. My nephews have been most annoying of late. Oh, brother, no, 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 don't, don't tax yourself. Sit down. It's you who should sit. I fear you may have a nutmeg poisoning. Take a sip of your glass of good cheer, dear old chap. It may prove effective. Do you know, it's a most astonishing thing. There is a tribe of Aborigines in southwest Tasmania who distill the chewed bark of the banyan tree. Shut yeah. up, you pedantic, boring, old poop. A pedantic, boring old poop. I shall leave you, brother. You've lost your reason. Reason? But not, not the tontine. Name of Finsbury, sir? Yes. Sign here, please, sir. Where do you want it, sir? Anywhere, my good man, anywhere. Uh, thank you for the tea and cakes. I shall taste them all through my dissection class. But would you say... Is your work in the nature of a vocation? No, no, not quite. My grandfather wished it. He believes that if one cannot join the ruling classes, 
one must do one's best to deplete them. Well. Who is it? Finsbury. Name of Finsbury, Mum. Yes. There's a shipment for you, Mum. shipments of eggs, but never anything like this before. Well, little sisters would not be refused, ma'am, if the staff were available. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, allow me to help. Oh, won't you miss your class? Oh, uh, that's of no consequence. I doubt if my class will miss me. Would you hold my coat? Oh. Are you Dr. Pratt? Hmm? What? What? Are you Dr. Pratt? Are you... Are you from the police? No. Then I am Dr. Pratt, yes. I was referred to you by a slight acquaintance. Oh? For professional advice. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, uh, hmm. Is it, uh, is it night or day? Day. Did you have an appointment to see me, sir? I'm afraid not. Then I will give you a, a day appointment immediately. Thank you very much. Sir, I'll sit in that chair. <laughs> Don't sit on that moggy, sir. She's the finest ratter in the East End. I'm terribly sorry. That's all right. Ah, oh, tiger. Now then, take off your clothes, sir, and cough. Doctor, it's not me. It's certainly not me, sir. It's probably one of my cats. Doctor! Come in. Come in. Doctor, I am not here on a matter of my personal health. Would you be so good, sir, as to uh, say that again? I did not come here for reasons of my personal health. What is the young lady's name? It is not that, Doctor. No, no, it isn't, no. I wanted to make a somewhat unusual request. Yes, yes. I was wondering, do you by any chance happen to have any, um, death certificates? Do I happen to have any death certificates, sir? What a monstrous thing, sir. What a monstrous thing to say to a member of the medical profession to realise the enormity of what you have just said. Yes. Do you have any death certificates? How many do you want? Oh, just the one would be sufficient. <laughs> and if you'd be so good as to simply sign your name and leave the remainder blank. Well, it'll cost you five shillings. The price is no object. Right, ten shillings then, payable in advance. Stay there, I'll just get my medical pen. My old thing. My Keep them here. Here. Oh! Uh, would you like to buy a moggy? No, thank you, Doctor. Mm, they make lovely pets. You'd like to have a moggy in the home. I collect eggs, Doctor. Eggs, yes. Oh, I enjoy an egg myself. Yes, they don't make good pets, though. You can never get them in at night. They're too quiet. Yes. All I want is a death certificate, Doctor. Oh, don't we all? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, indeed. Um, you may return for it this evening. I will have one of my uh, stuff collected from the place of its origin. Meanwhile, keep taking the pills. This evening, Doctor. Take them this evening. It's as good a time as any. Yes. Oh, that's better. Of course. 
I was not always as you see me now. I'm sure you weren't, Doctor. No, no, no. no. I had a magnificent practice in the fair confines of Camden Town. A charming area. The sick and groggy travelled from all over the world to cure at my door. Wonderful work. I specialised, you see, in rare marine diseases of the spleen. How very interesting. The accolade itself was not beyond my grasp. Within it, I'm sure. Yes, until that unfortunate episode with the Lord Mayor's wife. Goodbye, Doctor. Come in. Come in. Our children would be idiots. Why, is there insanity in your family? What? Oh, no, oh, no, no. What I mean is, is that it is a proved medical fact that marriage between cousins... Oh, but which... we're not cousins. Uncle Joseph is just my guardian. I am an orphan. An orphan? Yes. Oh, me too. I never knew my parents. They were killed in a balloon ascension. Oh, I only knew mine vaguely. My father was a missionary. He was eaten by his Bible class. And your mother? She too. They never eat one without the other. Oh, it's... it's destiny. Oh. Stop! Stop! <laughs> Have you just made a delivery to number 11? That's right, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Ah, cousin. How is your dear grandfather this morning? Oh, she's well. What? Oh, oh, that is to say he's just the same. My grandfather, of course. Well, I must be off to my Bible class, cousin. Cousin? Uh, I mean, Julia? Master Michael, sir, come quickly. Your granddad, come quickly. Oh, Dr. Slattery. Am I too late? No, no, no. No, I've just given him a sedative. Is it anything serious? As you know, I, I am a medical student, and I would understand a more detailed diagnosis. I see. Well, in that case, uh, <clears throat> what I think he had, to the nearest guess, yes. technically speaking, that is, yes. was a conniption fit. Oh. Yes. Yes. Yes, well, don't worry about it. Oh, what are you bluffing for, boy? Hmm? Such a good man. 
such a gentle soul to be taken from us. What are you talking about? My dear departed Uncle Masterman. You know more departed than you are, probably less so, judging from the last time you consulted me. How are the boils, by the way? Hmm? It disappeared? Yeah? Miss Julia, excuse me. Come, Julia. Good day, cousin. Julia. I thought they'd all gone. I took it to be Lady Pittman's goods returned, sir. Oh, dear. Perfect day ruined. Joseph. Oh, He's... yes. I forgot to tell you. He came and went. Came and went? Yes. Oh, terrible, sir. Oh, terrible it was. What was? The altercation between them. Altercation? Oh, yes. Terrible. Things flying around. Words, angry words. And objects. Objects? Grandfather has murdered Uncle Joseph uh, and then suffered a conniption fit. No, never say it. And he did it because he wanted me to have the tontine. Mercy on us. See for yourself, Peacock. Uh, oh, See for yourself. Uh, oh, no. Uh, no. Oh, no. What shall we do, Master Michael? What shall we do? There's only one thing to do, Peacock. We must inform the police. But your grandfather's good name, sir. I shall say I did it. No. I'm an old man. Let me say I did it. What was your motive? Money. They'd never believe you. And why not, sir? After all. I haven't been paid for seven years. I'm begging your pardon, sir. No, Peacock. It's a noble gesture. But I shall plead guilty to the crime. But think of your career, sir. You have your whole life before you. Yes, there is that, of course. Well, we must think of something else, then. Who is it? I don't know, sir. Shall I ask? I don't know. Could it be the police already? I don't know. Do they work that fast? I don't know. Hello? Oh, it's Miss Julia. Oh, no, no, listen. Listen, listen. Take your time getting to the door. Yes. Coming! I'll slow it down a bit. Uncle Masterman. My Uncle Joseph says it has strong recuperative qualities. Oh. Hello. Oh. Oh, I've brought a little sustenance for your dear grandfather. I thought that... Oh. What is it? Oh. You 
haven't any furniture. What? Oh, how sad. Oh, I always knew you were poor, but I never imagined anything like this. Oh, really? Would you mind if I looked around? Or would you like to look around the hallway? Oh, I've always wanted an empty room of my own. Ours is so cluttered. Oh, we have lots of empty rooms. Would you like to see another one? Oh. Oh, how sad. All you've got left is your piano. Uh, I learned the piano forte as a child, but oh, yes. I can never practice. Uh. Cousin Morris will not permit an instrument in the house. He says the vibrations might shatter his egg. Yes, of course. Uh, I, I think you'll find the piano's rather out of tune. Oh, I'm sure not. Uh, my repertoire is somewhat limited, I'm afraid. Hark, I, I think I hear my grandfather calling me. No, I don't think so. <gasps> oh, I'm terribly sorry. Then it must be your cousin Morris calling you. Oh. Yes, that must be it. In either case, it's one or the other. And I think we ought to see which one of them wants which one of us. What? Goodbye. Oh! Oh! Forgive me! What to do, Peacock? What to do? That's the question. Well, if I may be allowed to say, sir. Anything, Peacock. Anything. Well, I have heard. That there are in certain sectors of this great city men, unscrupulous men, sir, who for a price will perform the most unsavory tasks. Dr. Pratt, rouse yourself, Dr. Pratt. I assure you, the, the lady was already dead when I arrived, Constable. Dr. Pratt! Come in. Hmm? I was here earlier. You asked me to return. Huh? Uh, oh, yes, 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 I remember. I've got what you wanted. Thank you, Doctor. Here, yeah, black currant jelly contains 12 grains of arsenic. Just spread it on your mother's bread and butter. Doctor, I wanted a death certificate. Oh, you've done her in already, have you? What's this? Hmm? Is that it? What? What's that? Oh, yes, this is... This is a death certificate. Yes. Uh, God, I've signed a lot of these in my time. Could you sign this one? Yes, yes, I, I'll sign this one. Yes. <laughs> Give me a uh, Thank you, dead doctor. Yes. Do you know, I was not always as you see me now. Was I, Mervyn? Eh? No, no, you're too young to remember. Stay away, lad. It's not good for you. like that might have shattered my eggs. Oh, but I was dreaming I was an egg, Morris, and that an eagle was trying to hatch me. Please cover yourself. Oh. What, um... What news of next door? Oh, well, very peculiar, Morris. I took Uncle Masterman some broth and Michael were... Well, he seemed to... How shall I say it? I, I think he threw me out. Threw you out? Yes. What do you think it means, Morris? Well, it means that, um... What it means is that, uh... I don't know what it means. Morris, am I pretty? Let me think. Oh, never mind. He's up to something. It's happened. I know it's happened. And Michael's trying to cheat us. Trying to cheat two little orphans out of the tontine. That must be it. Peacock! Peacock! Uh, where is the old fool? How she's full of... Fools! I'm coming! Blast you! Thank you. 
I'll turn the cart round and stand guard. Funny, dirty. What's all this malarkey about a piano then? Still, he must be the one. Can't be two in the same house, can there? Come on, let's get him wrapped up now. Yeah. Here. You take his legs. Yeah. I'll take his shoulders. Yeah. Right, well, thanks for the business, sir. Good night. Chelsea Undertaker, sir. We have a dead person. What is just deceased? I see. Well, uh, be about your sacred business. Thank you, sir. The compliments of the night to you, sir. Gentlemen, the great tontine has been won after 63 years by your uncle, um, uh, Joseph um, Finsbury. Yes, we've telegraphed him in Bournemouth. He will um, arrive shortly. A most magnificent sum. Um, could we ask just how magnificent? Oh, yes, yes. yes. <coughs> well, a magnificent total of 111,000 pounds, three shillings and twopence. <laughs> We could, of course, continue to administer the fund. No, 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 no. Uh, my uncle gave quite explicit instructions. He wants the entire amount handed over to him. Oh. In cash. Mm -hmm. Immediately. Oh. Most unusual. Uh, oh, well, however. <laughs> well, uh, in that case, um, uh, would it be convenient for you to return, say, at uh, three o'clock? Ah, <laughs> we were thinking more immediately than that. Um. Unless, of course, our new legal friend could bring it to the house. Yes, that would suit. You see, this is sure to prove a trying day for our dear uncle. Mm, the shock of losing a brother, you see. Plus the shock of winning the tontine might prove too much for his weak, terribly weak heart. Hmm. That's no good. Here, give it to me. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Give it to me. Now, this time, this time. Pull, pull. You know what that is. That is stuck. That is what that is. Is this the Finsbury residence? What? Kindly address me as Major. Are you a member of this household? The butler, Major. Does your employer answer to the name of Masterman Finsbury? That was the case, Major. Then he is delivered up and safely returned. This poor, misguided man attempted to take his own immortal life last night. We fished him out of the river. Mercy! Yes? Did somebody call? Later, Mercy. Later. First things first. Pass him through. Come along. Come along. Now, you two, give a hand. Come along. A hand. Get the piano out of the way. Come along. Get moving. Get moving. Where's he usually kept? First door. Form of the army. Take him upstairs. You ought to count yourself lucky we were on our toes last night. The Lord moves in mysterious ways when he is raising money for our cause. We have to move very mysteriously. To raise any boodle here. Boodle? What do you mean? I am not in charge of the finances. 
You have to wait till Master Michael returns. We can wait. Yeah, Master Michael. Oh, oh. Here, here's that boy. Do you want to earn a penny? Yeah. Here, go to St. Mary's Hospital. Ask for Mr. Michael Finsbury. Michael Finsbury? be of service in your hour of need. Oh, oh yes, I've come to pay my respects. And who, may I ask, have you suffered the sad loss of? My uncle, Masterman Finsbury. Finsbury. Finsbury as in Park. Well, the only soul reposing here belongs and answers to the name Wilfred Ebenezer Hackett. Oh. Well, uncle was called many names, but that was never one of them. Well, when did your uncle die? Late last night. In that case, allow me to present you with my card. Ah. Uh, oh, I appear to have run out. Business is so brisk these days. But it is quite obvious, my dear young lady, that you are in need of my entire organization. When you leave me at the undertaker's, go back to the house, unpack uncle, and place him in the hallway so that it appears that he fell down the stairs. Why do I always have the packing and unpacking to do? You're quite right. I can't trust you with the simplest task. I'd better handle it. We haven't got much time. Here we are. Get out! Tell the undertaker's a simple coffin. Nothing expensive. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to... Most unusual. Most unusual. I think we'd better play a call on... On... Yes. I think we'll pay a call on... Michael Finsbury, sir. I know, I know. Michael Finsbury, naturally. Bring that down, will you? Right, sir.
Dear uncle, my cousin should never have broken the glad news at the top of the stairs. Why? What happened? Oh, well, the poor old chap <laughs> broke his noodle. Oh, I see you mean it. It proved fatal. Oh, totally. Excuse me. Now me. What's what? Well, today is the 12th. This is dated the 13th. Well, here today and gone tomorrow. <laughs> Surely a mere formality, sir. You have our words as English gentlemen that our uncle is no longer with us. Mm. I wonder... I wonder if you could give us a few more moments alone with him before you remove his mortal remains. Of course, sir. Please indulge yourself. Thank you. Well, in that case, perhaps it'd be as well if I returned another day for the transfer of the... Uh... Oh, no, 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 no. What must be done, must be done. Uh, uh, we must... Curb our natural grief. Exactly. Uh, uh... The point is, I did not kill grand, my brother Joseph. Grand, grand, I tried to, but I failed. Grand, if you'll stop I, I, your spluttering and allow me to speak, sir, yes, the sir. point is, the tontine is ours. Well, it certainly isn't yours, and it must be returned. It must be returned at once. You can't. You can't ask that of two innocent little orphans. You couldn't take it back now. You gave it to us. It's ours. I put it to you, gentlemen, that Masterman Finsby is alive and your uncle dead. I have his death certificate. It's a mistake. It says he died tomorrow. Relinquish that chest, sir. Never. And please do not touch me. <laughs> you touched me. Uh, you may remove the body now. Certainly, sir. Stop them! Stop them! They have the money! Get distant! Stop them! Stop! 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 Stop!
Could you tell me where I could find Michael Finsbury? It's Morris Finsbury you want. He's just made off with a hundred thousand pounds. What? Where? That way, in the hearse. This man was a witness. <laughs> Seize him. It's obvious we are not needed here. We brought the gospel, but they would not listen. Damn them all. <laughs> every 25 seconds, which means it is extremely probable that one of us may not even live to arrive at the cemetery. <laughs> Quick, 
Get the flag, deliver notice. I well recall, Mrs. Hackett, that your late husband showed me another kindness on February the 3rd. No, February the 4th. Another kindness by obtaining... And it was kind of him to pass on, wasn't it? Oh. Wasn't it? Oh. Gave you a better chance of the tontine. Hypocrite! You hypocrite! Oh. Don't touch me! I... You... <laughs> Don't... You have cameras, Hackett. Oh. Nothing spoiled is a beautiful oh. occasion. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done with Mr. Hackett? Look at the size of that coffin. That's only part of him. He weighed 15 stone. And look at that ridiculous flag. He hated England. Oh, oh, oh. Excuse me, you have our body. Uh, our Yorkshire Terrier. He would have been 14 tomorrow, poor little beggar. We are gathered together in the sight of God and in the face of this congregation to join this man and this woman. No, 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 that's not it. I must have quiet. I demand the silence due this solemn occasion. Short time to live, that is full of misery. He cometh up and is cut down like a flower, he fleeth as it were a shadow, and never continueth in one stay. In the midst of life we are in death, of whom may we seek for succor? But Stop. Stop this funeral! I demand the money to be returned. The tontine has yet to be won. Fate names me the winner, the entire amount goes to my ward, Julia. Julia, my darling, I've always loved you. Be mine tonight. Better still be mine. Let us begin. Man that is born of a woman hath but a short time to live and is full of misery. All right, come on, come on. What's going on? Come on. What is it? Come on. Please, sir, I beg of you, there's a dead man here. All right, now on, move. Finsbury? Yes. Morris Finsbury. Yes. Morris Finsbury, I arrest you for stealing one hundred thousand pounds. But the money has been returned, sir. And who are you, sir? Some sort of accomplice? Certainly not. I am his solicitor. Uh, you brought your solicitor with you, have you? Yes, I've met your type before. No, no, no. no. I mean, I'm the administrator of the Tontine. Tontine? Named after Lorenzo Tonti, a Neapolitan banker. And who are you, sir? I? Uh, he's nobody. He's my young brother. And who are you, sir? None of your business, sir. I shall have you arrested for indecent exposure. Oh! My grandfather was recently buried, sir. And who are you, sir? He is Michael Finsbury. And who are you, madam? She is Julia Finsbury. 
shortly to become Julia Finsbury. Young man, did you know there was a body in the piano? I did it. Who is he? He is the butler, sir. The butler did it? No, sir. I put the body there. Is this true? Yes, sir. In that case, you are entitled to a reward of £1,000. You are responsible for bringing the Bournemouth Strangler to his just end. A uh, £1,000? Oh, but I, 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 don't, I don't deserve it. The body just arrived in a barrel. I sent it. And who are you, sir? He is of diminished responsibility, officer. It was all my doing. If there's any justice in this naughty world, the reward is mine. And who are you? You remember me, Morris Finsbury. I was falsely accused of stealing a hundred thousand pounds, whereas in fact it was me and me alone who... Thank you.